Okie dokie. Hello everybody. This is uh, going to be a quick uh, GIMP tutorial. It's not really going to be anything extra special or anything like that. It's just I had somebody asking me how to do something. So uh, this is how to do what you wanted to do. And I really should have looked and actually seen... Where on earth did it go? There it is. Uh, so, what on earth? Screen blanked. Alright. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a reference sheet using these two pictures right here and the information in the text file located on the left. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm checking to see how large the picture is so I know how big of a base file to make in GIMP. So in GIMP, uh, this is running GIMP 2.8. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to click on New. And this is going to create a new image. What I'm wanting to do is it's, it's asking for how big of an image in pixel size. You can set it to inches, millimeters, points, feet, yards. I'm just going to leave it at pixels. Everything that I know of goes by pixels. So I'm going to open the properties of both these files uh, to get their uh, image size, uh, width, uh, let's see, I need to put the width, I'm going to put the width at double the wide picture, which means I need to set the width at roughly 4600 pixels wide 4600 oh that's not what I needed 4600 by the tall one is all right 4600 Ooh, whoa not that big 4600 all right it is going to pull up an error just because of how GIMP is coded you're trying to create an image of a size of 197.2 megabytes. What this is saying is that uh, GIMP has only been allotted 132 megabytes, and you're trying to create an image base over that size. Now, on my computer, this is not a problem. This is right at one fifth of a gigabyte. I have 12 gigabytes of memory standing by some smaller computers will not like this. Uh, if that's the case, you're going to have to do a lot of shrinking and stuff. Uh, but since my computer can actually handle this, I'm going to go ahead and run it like this. Now, this doesn't look like a very big image. This thing is massive. This is 12.5% zoom. If I full screen it, zoom in, that's 50% and it's already running off the page. All right. Uh, what I need to do now is I'm going to right click on both these images. I'm going to do Edit with GIMP. That's going to pull up both the images within GIMP. I'm going to minimize that back down. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the first one. Over here on the Layers and Brushes panel, I'm going to grab the only one, which is and it's going to pull it out. I'm going to drop it into the main file. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the second one, so they're both on there. I can now close both of those out. As you see, we now have two pictures on top of a white background. This is not going to work. They're both on top of each other. In the toolbox slash tool opt dot 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 column, it's like, yeah, tools and options. The one that looks like four arrows going every which direction that is the move tool this is going to be able to move layers uh, so what we have here is we've got three layers the background is one layer and the images each count as a separate layer what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna with the move tool selected I'm gonna grab one image I'm gonna pull it up to the top left corner you can use control mouse wheel to zoom in and out it doesn't have to be precise by any means. Uh, I'm just aligning it top left corner. The second picture, I'm going to align not to the bottom right corner. I'm going to align it to the bottom right corner of the first image. So it's 
two of them are just more or less stacked on top of each other. Alright, now this is going to create white gap and space and stuff. The way you get rid of that is with the crop tool. It looks very similar to an X-Acto knife. I'm going to click on that and it gives us this odd icon. I'm going to take bottom right corner of the second image. I'm going to click and hold. And it's going to set up a little box. We're going to take expand that box all the way back up to the top left corner. What this is going to do is it's going to exactly what it says. It's going to crop the image to the size. Everything that is dark gray or shadowed is going to be cut. This looks good right like it is. We're going to hit the enter key and it's going to crop the image to that size. Right, I can zoom back in. Alright, to add the information we're going to select the big A which is a text uh, yeah, text, text tool create or edit text layers. Down here in the tool options, we're going to set the size up to, let's start at 50. We're going to leave it set to black. I'm going to highlight this box right here. Wow, that is tiny. All right. Because this is such a super high resolution picture, we're going to take and run this up to 200. All right. Much better. All right. To put the text in, I'm going to go back to the text file that I have. I'm just going to highlight everything on my keyboard. I'm going to hit Control C, which is the default Windows command for copy. I'm going to come back to GIMP, hit Control V. It's going to copy everything. All right, I need to turn. Oh, I oh, wish I quit doing that. I've got to turn the text back down. I'm going to set it to 100. All right, 100 is perfect. It has put all the information that was given within the appropriate size box. Uh, go back here. I have two pieces of text. Control C again. I'm going to come back, create a second box in the bottom left corner. Control V to paste. And it managed to actually fit perfectly. All right, this is all the text that's going on this picture. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a simple background. Since we don't really want this plain Jane white background, we are going to use the gradient tool of GIMP. Now there's a bunch of different gradient tools. There's uh, straight black to straight, or color A to color B. Just no, ah, wow. Yeah, uh, GIMP has a lot of different fad gradients, not fadients. I don't know what a fadient is. Um, varying in intensity, sharpness, coding, colors, patterns, I mean there's everything. I'm just gonna do a simple one, I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do the FG to BG uh, HSV counterclockwise. Uh, it's foreground color to background color clockwise direction. Uh, I'm going to leave the shape as linear. You can put it as bilinear, which puts the split right, in, or puts the foreground color right in the middle. Radial, which puts the, f I mean, it's just a bunch of crazy stuff. I can do a spiral if you want to see a spiral. Uh, to choose the colors, the two squares, one's black, one's white. The, uh, if I go ahead and click there's this one icon, this looks like an eyedropper. You click it, and then select a color on your screen, and it'll absorb that color into Blender, or er, GIMP, not Blender. Blender is something, I wish that would stop. All right, um, we're gonna use that as our first color. Pick the white, do the same thing. I'm gonna get a second color. Now this is going to give us our foreground, and background colors, which is going to be used in the gradient tool. Now on the layers and brushes panel, I'm going to select the background, make sure it's highlighted, or else this could not do what I want. Then to use the gradient tool, st pick a starting point, click and hold, drag your mouse, it's going to create a line over to your second point, and GIMP is going to fill in your colors, how you wanted them filled in. 
for some odd reason, this is actually giving us a rainbow. Um, right, I need FG to BG, HSV, clockwise hue. I selected the wrong one. All right, I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo. Uh, that's a standard command on Windows and GIMP and everything. Uh, I'm just gonna leave this not like that. Come on, Control Z. I'm going to put it just as linear. That's a simple one. I'm going to go from about right here down to right here, and it's going to create a nice little gradient pattern. Um, which also means I need to change the top text from black to white. To do that, I've selected the text tool again. Go and highlight the text, and over here on the panel, the tool options panel, color, click that, and we're going to select it to white, hit OK, and it's going to change the text to white. Now, um, you can, uh, before I go on, I guess, a simple explanation of this, you've got, um, th if I remember right, this is GIMP's primary color selection tool. It is very complicated. The little slide bar gives you all the colors of the rainbow. The big square in the middle will adjust more finely the color that you're wanting. Or if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, you've got hue, saturation, value, red, green, and blue sliders. Or if you want to do it even more old-fashioned way, you can actually enter in the... Uh, if I remember right, I think it's a... what is it? It's a binary code for the colors, or I think it's a binary code. But you can enter actually you can actually enter in all the numbers for red, green, blue, value, hue, and saturation, and it will give you an exact color. Or if you know HTML notations, you've got that as well. Or if you want to do something a bit more standard, GIMP's got a couple other color selectors. Or you can use printer colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use white. <laughs> I forgot what I was using. All right. Um, this is all I'm going to do to this image. Uh, when you're done editing your image, you're going to go over on the top left, go to File. Don't click Save. That exports it as a XF, what is it, a XCF. XCF files contain all this information that GIMP is keeping. They're, if I remember right, they're pretty much GIMP native only. You can't go and open a XCF in File Viewer or anything like that. It's just going to give you an error. It's like, hey, what on earth is this file? So you have to go to Export. Uh, just click Export. Then you're going to click a file location. I'm just exporting this straight to my desktop. You can save it as a PNG, JPEG. Oh my goodness, there is a lot. Um, I recommend just saving it as a JPEG or PNG or a bitmap. Bitmap is going to take up the most. PNG and JPEG are standard. I haven't seen a bitmap image in a long time. But I'm going to go and save this as a PNG. Yeah. PNG are higher quality images, JPEG are more compressed. So it really depends upon what you're going to use it for. I'm going to hit export. It's going to uh, pull up this. I'm just going to click save background color, make sure that's on there, save resolution, creation time, comment, uh, set the compression level, leave that at maximum, and click export. This is going to take a while. This is a big image. Yeah. This is a fast computer and it's taking a while. If you have slower computers this could take a really long time. So and don't close this. If you hit cancel you have to do it all over again so beware. But that is the basis for text editing, image moving, creating a file, a bunch of stuff like that. And that, I have to say, these are awesome pictures. I mean, I just love the drawing style. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description to where 
I got both these pictures, who I'm doing this for, where you can find them, where you can find me. Uh, all this is going to be on DeviantArt. And other than that, uh, it's not much. Okay, why did my screen flash again? That is bizarre. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have questions, comments, or just plain want to spam the chat with whatever, feel free. <laughs> Since, yeah, just whatever. I uh, hope to see you around. If you like the commenting, commentating, tutorial, whatever you on earth you want to call this, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Uh, I'm not going to put out a ton of videos, but I will put out some. Uh, yeah. Links, there's going to be links in the description. Look for those. They lead to awesome pages. Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching.